So first things first guys, when it comes to uh, performing a relative compression test, you want to do whatever as you need to do on your particular vehicle to uh, stop the engine from actually starting, right? So, and I don't want it being fueled either, obviously, to wash the cylinders. So I've just pulled the uh, fuel pump relay. You can see it there. I've got it uh, actually from the removed from the distribution uh, block here. Uh, so there's no fuel pressure. Uh, the car might initially run for momentarily. Once it purges the fuel in the line, it can no longer run. That will give you the ability to just crank it on the starter for uh, relative compression testing purposes. I've got my hand tech scope out, the uh, T01000 uh, series. Mine is just the cheapy uh, two channel, uh, but the procedure will be the same regardless of what model you have. So uh, somebody asked if I could demonstrate a relative compression test with the scope, right? So in order to do that, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Traditionally, you use a, a clamp on amp meter, uh, sorry, a clamp on amp probe. And uh, this particular, uh, um, I just have the low amp probe. So the notion that you can't do it with a low amp probe is nonsense. Um, but I don't know, that that message seemed to have been pervade somewhere along the line but as you'll see in a minute you can do it just fine with a low amp probe you're no really concerned with the absolute numbers here anyway guys right the whole point is it's a relative compression test you're just checking uh the starter draw when the uh pistons come under uh, uh compression of course it's going to load the starter more there's going to be more current draw that's going to be reflected on the scope on the trace right so i'm not going to bother showing you uh how to index the trace so you won't know which uh hump on the trace uh, is res is respective to what cylinder but it doesn't really matter so long as you have a healthy trace unfortunately spoiler alert this is a pretty healthy trace right so again some guys are no too familiar with scopes guys so i'm not trying to state the obvious here but some guys have asked to take, be particular about how to hook up so i'm just on channel one here right so again i've got my current uh uh, clamp on amp probe here and I've relabeled this so it makes a wee bit more sense to me and I'm in the uh, uh, I'm in the uh, setting that basically for the CC65 uh, 100 millivolts out of the clamp is going to represent one amp okay so you may have the original labeling I changed the labeling because this makes a wee bit more sense to me zero your probe get yourself around that particular uh, cable is the one that comes from the, uh, you can see this one's obviously from the body ground. That one there is actually from the block ground and that is joined at the negative uh, uh, terminal at the battery, of course. So I'm just around the, the uh, block ground up to the negative terminal. And so we're gonna mo monitor the current draw that's going through the starter and it's gonna be reflected on the trace. <sighs> now, setting up the scope this thing is a wee bit of a pain in the ass it's it's by far the most difficult scope i have in order to set up the uh the time base and the uh the uh, voltage settings on the x and y scales uh it's just it's a bit annoying you know uh you always have to wait for the time delay depending on what your uh, time base actually is you basically have to wait for that to pass so that you have an active trace and if you have long uh, uh, time base selections, so this is, uh, as you can see, half a second or 500 milliseconds per division. So it's 14 divisions. It's going to be a 14 second delay before you really have an active trace. It's active right away, but before it's drawn is what I mean, right? So there's a delay and it's a long delay because we happen to be on 500 milliseconds in this particular case. Uh, I've I've got the uh, just channel one selected here again. I don't have uh, um, I don't have uh, an indexation to to sync it with a synchronization pulse is what I mean, guys, from the uh, uh, any of the cylinders. So it's just uh, relative compression proper. We don't know what cylinder represents what, but that's neither here nor there. So I've only got channel one actually selected. Um, here's the settings I actually have. So you can see it and you'll note that uh, I'm actually on invert here and that is just a function of what direction um, you have the clamp on amp probe. I wouldn't need invert if I flipped that around but then you wouldn't be able to see the selections that I have set here. So uh, I'm going to set this up for uh, a single one shot. So when uh, I'll get my wife to actually crank the car here, we'll watch the screen. Don't be su don't be surprised when the trace doesn't uh, paint right away. Again, there's going to be a, quite a significant delay before you see it. 
in a single mode or one shot it's going to hold that on screen so we can actually consider it right go ahead crank it lisa okay so you'll notice there's nothing on screen and you wonder what's happening and then again after the delay passes it's going to be seven seconds before you have an active trace right painted on screen is what i mean what we have here is the end rusher current and it's going to max out because the starter even though it's just a small two liter engine uh, i'm sure it draws more than 65 amps which is the maximum capacity that this little probe can actually sense right then it will basically clip and that's what is done here so it's clipped but it doesn't matter we're not interested in the peak current of the starter we're interested in the rel relative compression humps here and you can see that as the starter as the cylinders go through their various cycles namely the compression strokes is loading the starter we don't know what cylinders we're looking at here again because we don't have a synchronization uh, uh, pulse does the matter because we have a healthy trace here so again the starters the starters engaged the end rusher current rotation of the engine for this duration you could do the math so you can in fact do the uh, relative compression test with the uh, to 1000 series uh, it's not difficult it is a wee bit of a test of your patience in order to get all the settings set up properly and again because of the time delay you're going to experience um, before you have a painted trace it's going to be confusing so you're going to have to wrap your head around that and then you'll be fine once you once you understand that limitation so once you're happy with the trace that you have of course you can come back to it and uh, change the scaling if you want to see stuff in a wee bit more detail you know we can scale it up and um, we can see here that we have uh, roughly the same um, compression humps on each cylinder. If one was low, you'd have a definite drop in the amount of current because if the compression was low, the starter would have less load on it and hence less current would be drawn and um, that would be reflected on the trace here. So I'm happy to report this looks reasonably uh, uh, healthy, at least from a compression standpoint. So yeah, I guess we'll leave it at that boys. Again, um, the most difficult part in this is the setup where you have to take your time, get the right time base, get the right scaling on the uh, the voltage setting, the X and the Y setup. setup. I like using the single uh, capture mode uh, because it will hold it here if you're working by yourself. I had my message tonight, which is unusual to crank it, but if you're working by yourself, once you're set up, you can uh, use the single shot and it's effective. That's it, boys. Cheers.